Hi everyone, this is Stephanie from the Stats on the T tennis blog talking to you about tennis stats. So last Saturday, Sunday, we had the finals at the Wimbledon Championships. And in the week after, I know many of us are in a very reflective mood thinking about how the results at the Grand Slam, um, what they tell us about where the tours are. And one of the things that we're often interested in, especially after a big tournament like a slam, is to say who had the most impressive results? What were the big surprises? So in this episode, I wanted to talk to you about how we could measure surprise and actually try to summarize our overall, um, the overall impressiveness of a player's performance at a tournament. When we think about surprise, there's no more perfect gift than this one of Venus Williams, who also happened to be this year's Wimbledon finalist. What you see here is the pure visualization of what surprise is all about. We have an expectation of what's likely to happen and something completely different happens. In other words, we can think of surprise as a comparison between reality, what actually happens, and our expectations. How do we apply this to tennis matches? Well, it's all about first finding a way to measure our expectation. And one of the ways we can do that is actually through ELO ratings. So I've talked about ELO ratings on the show before, um, and you can also read about them on the Tennis Abstract or 538. Um, the ELO ratings are basically a way to measure a player's ability using a probability-based method. Once we have these ratings, let's say we're going to match up player one and player two against each other. They each have their own rating at the start of the match. If I want to know what player one's likelihood of winning that match is, here's the basic formula I can use. It all comes down to the difference between my rating and my opponent's rating. That difference goes into the exponent that you see there on the right, and that gives me an expectation of how likely it is that I'll win the match. Just to give you some idea, players um, that are different by 100 points, so if I have plus 100 points over my opponent, that'll translate to 65% match win probability. Um, if I add another 100, that goes up to 75, another 185. So it approximately scales every 100 points corresponds to roughly um, 10 additional percentage points in my win expectation. Now that we have a formula for measuring our expectation for any particular match, we can apply that to get an overall surprise score by comparing our expectation against what actually happened. So did that player win the match or not? Let's take a look at a concrete example of how this would work. And in this illustration, we'll use Sam Query's results at this year's Wimbledon. Here I tabulated all of Sam Query's results from this year's Wimbledon. Query reached the semifinal, making him the first American male to advance that far at a Grand Slam since Andy Roddick in 2009. You see each of his opponents and what his ELO rating difference against those opponent were in that match, just based on his ELO rating at the start of the event. And then we have the results, so we give a zero for a loss and ones for wins. Now, using that formula we, we saw just a bit ago, we can fill in our prediction column. And this is what we find. So based on those ratings that you see um, in the center, we get a prediction for each of those matches. All we do then is take our result column minus that prediction column to get an overall surprise score for every match. And then we can sum those up to get a total surprise for the tournament for that player. So looking over these surprise scores, um, a more positive number means a surprising win a more negative means a very surprising loss. So for Query, we can see that he had two matches where he had plus 70% um, surprise. That was in the round of 32 against Sangha. And then the most surprising result was his win over Andy Murray in the quarterfinal. We can use the same method shown in this illustration for all of the players that competed at Wimbledon. And as we sum up the surprise of all of their matches, we get a total surprise score. If we rank them then on the most to least surprising, we can come up with the, the top most impressive players at Wimbledon. 
So I went ahead and did this and applied it to the men's and ladies' draw. Let's have a look at what we find. Men's side, number one spot of most surprising top 10 goes to Sam Query. This confirms that Query's reaching the semifinal this year was a pretty impressive result. Adrian Manorino lands the second spot. Manorino reached the round of 16 and had big wins over Feliciano Lopez and Gael Monfils, which both earned him plus 0.7 to his surprise score. Marin Cilic, actually, the finalist this year, takes the third spot, so getting to the final for the seventh seed turned out to be um, a pretty big deal. And if we look over Chilich's results, his biggest win actually turned out to be in the quarterfinal against Jules Muller, where he earned um, his highest positive surprise result, which was a plus 0.4. Next, we have Thomas Burdick taking the fourth spot. And then a lesser known name lands in number five, and that goes to Ruben Bevelmans, who was tearing up the first week, although he wasn't getting as much coverage as some of the more recognized players. Bevelman's wins over Tommy Haas and Daniel Medvedev um, in the first week earned him each 0.8 to his surprise score. In the sixth spot, we have Ernest Golbis, who was getting a lot of attention in week one and was one of the more exciting players to watch at that time. Golbis ultimately reached the round of 32, and his biggest win at the event was over Juan Martin Del Potro, and that result definitely makes him a player to watch for the rest of the season. Next in the list is Benoit Paire, who reached the round of 16 this year. In eighth spot, we have Sebastian Offner, uh, not a very well-known name, but Offner um, earns his spot for his win over Jack Sock in the round of 64. Next, we have Judy Sella, whose inspiring win over John Isner gets him the ninth spot. And then finally, our list is rounded out by Jaron Jared Donaldson, and this one probably deserves a bit of an asterisk because much of that score is due to the first round retirement of Yanko Tipsarovic. Turning to the women's side, the Wimbledon champion, Garvin Muguruza, actually ends up in the number one spot in our most um, surprising results. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that I'm using ELO ratings here that are a combination of overall ELO and grass-specific ELO. And Muguruza's results on grass have been a bit up and down. She did have um, a result at Wimbledon reaching a final in 2015, um, but other events it's been a bit up and down, so that hurts Muguruza's expectations a bit here. Um, so she gets the top spot, and her biggest wins were her round of 16 win over Angelique Kerber and her final win over Venus Williams. The second spot goes to the Cinderella story of Wimbledon, which was Magdalena Roberakova. Roberakova has actually been largely playing on the ITF, court, um, ITF tour, trying to build up her ranking after a period of injury. Um, and she turned out to be one of the fiercest women competitors this year, making huge wins over Karolina Pliskova in the round of 64 and Koga Vandewey in the quarterfinal earning her plus 0.8 and plus 0.7 um, surprise scores, respectively. Third spot goes to Petra Martic. Martic seemed to come out of nowhere um, this year, reaching the round of 16 with big wins over, her biggest win over um, Daria Gavrilova in the first round. Fourth spot goes to Madison Brangle, who ended Petra Kvitova's run uh, this year uh, Kvitova was many, many people's favorite to actually take the title, and I'm sure many of us wanted her um, to be in the event longer, but um, credit to Brangel for getting that big win um, and giving her the fourth spot in our rankings. The number five spot goes to teenage phenom Anna Kanju, um, who had impressive wins over Sabine Lisicki and Dominika Sibolkova, which left no doubt that she is the real deal. Shelby Rogers, Polona Herkog, and Maria Sakari um, all reached the round of 32, landing the 6th, 7th, and 8th spots in our rankings. Um, across all of those matches, um, among these three, the biggest win was earned by Rogers, who defeated Lucy Savarova and earned a plus 0.7 surprise in a single match. Ninth spot goes to Helena Ostapenko. 
um, who kept up her surprising run this year after her title win at the French Open and reached the quarterfinal at Wimbledon. Her biggest challenge in getting there was Elena Svitolina, um, so that had the most to do with landing her the ninth spot in our list. The final spot goes to Alison Risk, who actually is the third American in, um, in our list. Um, she had major successes over um, Kristina Modenovic and Sloane Stevens, so both of those wins got her to the round of 32 and earned her spot 10 in our surprise ranking. Using this method to rank the top 10 most surprising men's and women's results shows us both some of the things we expected to see, but also some unexpected players, names that didn't get as much media coverage, for example. So I think that makes this a pretty interesting stat and one that's really useful when we're trying to summarize something as complex as a 128 draw. Um, so it's something we can apply to any event and it might even be interesting to look you know, over time to see which events produce the most surprising re results over the course of a whole year, for example. So a lot more to do with this measure, but hopefully some interesting things to add to uh, your impressions about Wimbledon. So thanks for joining me and hope to see you guys next time.